Toronto Raptors are actively pursuing a trade for Jakob Pertl as they're persistently talking to the San Antonio Spurs front office about making a potential deal. So we'll break down all those reports that came out today as well as what the Raptors would likely have to give up in a potential package. Additionally, Fred Van Vliet unfollowed his teammates on Instagram today. There's a big fuss made about it, then he ended up following them back. So we'll discuss that whole situation as well as an injury update we have to dive into. So a lot of stuff to dive into. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors guy, just breaking down the latest Toronto Raptors news and want to give a quick update because we had our uh, our giveaway for everyone that signed up for the Cool Bet app and congratulations to Ayano for winning uh, winning those tickets for the Raptors Lakers game tonight. And if you guys want to stay, uh, if you guys want to stay in the mix for any of these uh, giveaways we're having in the next few weeks, next couple months, definitely use the link down below to sign up for Cool Bet using our link. Send a screenshot to myself or Goody, and then you'll be automatically added to the list for any giveaway ways we have coming up over the next couple of months so it's also a great sports book that you can sign up for it's free to sign up anywhere across canada so use our link down below if you do want to be entered to win any giveaways we're having in the in the coming weeks but we have some crazy news to dive into and the first thing we're taking a look at is the toronto raptors persistently trying to acquire Jakob purdle as you know the san antonio spurs are a team that had a hot start to the season but have absolutely fallen off a cliff in terms of getting wins and now they're back uh sort of on their fire sale mode they sent away uh dejounte murray this offseason Jakob purdle was rumored to be in trade discussions last trade deadline and now it seems like this will be the year he actually gets moved from the san antonio spurs and once again the Toronto Raptors are back into the rumor mill, back into the report mill, but it seems a little bit more amped up for this season. As a report came out today, that two teams are most persistent about acquiring Jakob Pertl. The Toronto Raptors, as well as the Golden State Warriors. Now, there's a full article sort of breaking down this whole situation, everything that's going on with the Jakob Pertl stuff. So, I'll break down an excerpt from it saying that the player the Spurs have the most inquiries about is Jakob Pertl. San Antonio's asking price for Pertl continues to be a pair of first round picks with limited protections. So, uh, you know, the San Antonio Spurs, we heard this stuff last season. They want two first round picks for Jakob Pertl, a guy that's very solid. We'll dive into his stats a little bit after, but a heavy asking price for uh, a guy that's, you know, not putting up insane, insane numbers. But this is where the Toronto Raptors come into play. As according to a pair of sources, two teams are most persistent about acquiring Pertl. And uh, it's the Toronto Raptors as well as the Golden State Warriors. The talks with the Raptors date back to last season's trade deadline, but the Raptors remain hesitant to offer anything more than a package highlighted by a single first round draft pick with moderate protection. So we kind of uh, have some insight in terms of what the Toronto Raptors are willing to give up in a potential Jakob Pertl deal. There's also a couple excerpts in the article indicating that the Spurs are on fire sale mode right now. And Jakob Pertl, while he's not old by any means, he's probably considered an NBA veteran at this point in his career. You know, they can get some value back from him. They can get a draft pick, especially while they're, uh, you know, alien hunting this season, trying to acquire Victor Webb and Yama. It seems like the year, the logical season that Jakob Pertl will end up being dealt away from the San Antonio Spurs. Now, the Toronto Raptors, we've been trying to acquire this guy ever since the, we ourselves were tanking, you know, with uh, Aaron Baines, we lost our centers and we want to you know, get a new position, a new player to fill in for uh, the Raptors' center spot. And unfortunately, the Raptors haven't been able to make a move with the San Antonio Spurs that uh, worked out for both sides. And you look at uh, Jakob Pertl's stats this season, once again, having a very solid year for the San Antonio Spurs. His numbers are a little bit down, but averaging 13 points per game, 9.9 .9 rebounds. The assists are pretty high this season at 3.5 per game. He's not a three-point shooter, but he gets a block a night, a steal a night. It's really effective from around, uh, you know, finishing around the rim. And he's really grown a lot since uh, his first couple seasons in the NBA where he actually played for the Toronto Raptors. So a very solid big man, elite on defense in terms of just high IQ ever since he was a rookie. He was a guy that sort of had those Marcus Saul high IQ plays in terms of just knowing positionally where to be. He can get up, he can block shots, and would just be a guy that would be really nice to anchor our defense, to finish around the rim, and can be more reliable than a guy like Christian Coloco, who's only in his rookie season. So if we had to make a deal, and we had to actually whip out the trade machine, given uh, the asking price for the San Antonio Spurs right now, and given what the Toronto Raptors are currently willing to give up, according to this article, I think a realistic trade to go down would probably be something along these lines. 
Ken Birch, as well as a young prospect in Malachi Flynn, going back to the San Antonio Spurs along with a first-round pick. The ESPN trade machine, I didn't add a first-round pick to it, but, you know, a, a lightly protected first-round pick going back to San Antonio, and then the Toronto Raptors receiving Jakob Pertl, uh on this deal. Because, you know, while two first-round picks, it sounds exciting, it sounds nice, it's pretty unrealistic for uh, the Spurs to be expecting that, given Jakob Pertl is, you know, his contract situation, one year left, he could leave him free agency coming up. So a, a one year, you know, could be a potential rental. Two first round picks for a guy, again, only averaging 13 points. Seems a bit unrealistic. If we can send a first that's, you know, has some protections on it, along with a young prospect in Malachi Flynn, then I think that's a completely reasonable offer. Now, the real question is, and the reason why we might not end up landing him, is we are competing with another team explicitly mentioned in this report and the Golden State Warriors. And we've seen this team not want to give up any of their young prospects. They're not about selling low on their guys. And But if they were willing to give away one of their Moses Moody's, their Kamingas, their even James Wiseman's, right? Like, or John, like Wiseman's, that's a, that could potentially outbid the Toronto Raptors, you know, protect a first-round pick. And Malachi Flynn, who could potentially be a slot in there as a nice little replacement project where Josh Primo sort of fell apart for them. They ended up releasing him. Maybe Flynn has a little bit more valuable for a Spurs tanking team, but, uh, you know, Wiseman and a first or something like that would definitely get it done over a potential Raptors package. But would the, would the Warriors be willing to give that up, especially given they'd have to add another contract to make a deal occur? I don't really know, but uh, let me know what you guys think about uh, what you'd probably trade as a potential... Uh, Yaka Pirtle offer. Some people are saying that they'd like to throw in Delano to ensure that Delano to ensure the a deal goes down. You know, I'd like to see what you guys have to say about uh, these potential trade packages. But Pirtle would definitely be a great way to anchor our defense and you know just give the Raptors an added punch you know in their front court. But the next thing we're talking about in this video is uh, Fred Van Vliet unfollowing his teammates on Instagram. Now there has been a lot of criticism thrown the way of Fred Van Vliet. In recent weeks, given the, his inability to knock down shots consistently for this Raptors squad, and now he's receiving criticism for stuff he's doing off the court, as the Instagram drama is picking up for the Toronto Raptors as our leader unfollowed basically a lot of basically all of his teammates. He stayed uh, following the Toronto Raptors. I'll, I'll show what the what what went on. Someone gr uh, screen grabbed basically what uh what's happening with Fred Van Vliet, and he unfollowed everyone. Uh, with exception of his brother, he still followed the Toronto Raptors, but unfollowed his teammates and then kept his uh, shop, his uh, leaning sponsorship, as well as uh, uh, JD Bucket's Sensei. So only followed five people today. And then, you know, Twitter was an uproar. Reddit was an uproar saying, oh, Fred Van Vliet, the leader of the team, unfollowing his teammates. What's he doing out there? Now, even when it was occurring, it seemed like a nothing burger because Fred Van Vliet, he unfollowed everyone. Like, there's five guys there. Even unfollowed guys like Kyle Lowry's buddies, players that weren't on this Raptor squad. I thought it was a whole bunch of nothing, but a lot of people were uh, making some big takes about it. And then I went back and I creeped it there today who Fred Van Vliet was following at this point. And while he's not following the entire Raptor squad, while he's not following the entire Raptors team, he's back to following Pascal Siakam, back to following Kyle Lowry, back to following OG Ananobi. So, you know... People got to stop stressing about all this stuff, but I thought I'd cover it because it's a huge headline going around Toronto Raptors media right now. Next thing we're uh, discussing, people love to bag on Fred, but uh, um, so I want to I want to make it clear that I think it's a big nothing burger. And if you see any crazy headlines about it, don't uh, I'm not even putting in the title of the video, but if you uh, yeah don't overreact to that. That's my that's my take. That's my point of putting it in the video. But uh, the next thing we're discussing is a major injury update as a. Uh, Toronto Raptors, they, uh, they're they facing the LA Lakers there tonight in this one. And once again, they'll be out without Precious Achua. They'll be without Juancho Hernan Gomez. And they'll be without Otto Porter Jr. But the Lakers will also be coming in shorthanded, and especially shorthanded in this one, as the Lakers will be without Anthony Davis, who has been absolutely remarkable as of late. He played only a few minutes in their last game against, I believe it was the Cleveland Cavaliers, and LeBron James, who's out with an ankle injury for uh, tonight's game against the Raptors. So... You know, as uh, as said, we are we're talking about cool bet earlier. If you're interested in uh, the Toronto Raptors, uh, you know, winning this game, you put your money on. It. You put your money on. These are the odds for the Raptors coming in this one. You know, the plus uh, they're plus twelve or they're minus twelve uh, twelve point five points. You know, if you want to get those odds, hit the money line there, and then uh, you know you can. Uh, they're minus eight three eight hundred and thirty three to to win the game. So 
might be a safe bet. This could be a, one of those sleeper games that the Toronto Raptors has come in and absolutely lose. So, you know, if you do end up betting on the game, definitely use CoolBet and use our link down below. But the final thing that we're discussing in this vid is uh, Delano Banton back with the Raptors 905, as well as uh, Jeff Doughton and Justin Champagny and a few guys down there. Delano Banton was put down into the G League, and the 905 were really struggling. Reggie Perry uh, called out the blog boys out there for uh, discussing the, the Raptors 905 and you know their struggles as of late and interviewing them and stuff, but they got a little turnaround victory against Leangelo Ball and, uh, and the Storm, and no one really had an insane game for the, for the 905 in this one. Right, you had uh, Reggie Perry himself, who 24 points and 10 rebounds, solid game. Justin Champagny, 17 points. Delano Banton down there with 19 points and uh, six turnovers, which is a little bit disappointing, especially with four assists, 34 minutes. Not the greatest of performances. And, uh, you know, we had Jeff Dow, more, more solid, solid game with 19 points, a couple steals. Eight assists, you know, doing Jeff Doughton things out there. But a lot of people were a little bit shocked to see Delano Banton go down and play for the G League team, especially where there were expectations for him to be our backup point guard and where our, our starting point guard has been struggling immensely as of late. So, you know, I'd say he'll be back with the, with the Toronto Raptors team going forward. And, you know, they just wanted to get a get the, the momentum swung a little bit for the Raptors 905 after a couple L's. But, folks, you guys are the best for making this far. Uh, appreciate everyone. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you uh, are enjoying the content. Use our link down below if you guys want to sign up for CoolBet. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.